Now, my friends, I am all for everybody flying around in space. I want to fly in space, yes. But Mars, everybody, Mars is, if I may use the term, a whole nother thing. Getting to Mars is not like, you know, if you could drive straight up, if things were worked out, it would, hour and a half, you'd be in outer space, right? Just if you had a nice, extraordinary road with some fabulous vehicle. But to get to Mars, if you just punch it, if you just go as fast as you can, you're taking nine or 10 months. And then once you get there, it is, if I may, freaking cold. All right, and there is nothing to breathe. It's not like, hey, you know, it's science fiction full of, you know, great looking people in swimsuits. No, it's, it's cold and dry. But with that said, there are subterranean glaciers, mostly of carbon dioxide, but there's water ice. Now, my father was a rock hound, my uncle was a geologist. He's, I don't know if you know, he's the guy who went around the world blowing stuff up. He loved to blow stuff up. Uh, and they loved their rocks and all the stuff. And the geologists who were involved in Mars exploration, they love their rocks, they're crazy for their rocks. I want to go where there's some place with water and see if there's anything still alive. I mean, everybody, in your lifetime, somebody may, driving around with these rovers on Mars, find the spiritual equivalent of a layer of pond scum, fossil pond scum. You guys, if we find evidence of life on Mars, it will, dare I say it, change the world. And so uh, I just want everybody to keep in mind that we continue to explore these extraordinary places because we don't know what we're going to find. And we may find something to be equivalent to Copernicus, the world is round. Galileo, we're not the only planet with a moon. I mean, the world could change completely. So uh, through a remarkable uh, clerical error, I uh, attended Cornell University, <laughs> and I had Carl Sagan. And it was just nothing. It was just I fell through the crack, OK? So I had Sagan for astronomy. And he was very interested in going to Mars. And he started an organization called the Planetary Society. I have been a member since 1980. Um, that was when the important work of um, Sid Vicious and the Sex Pistols was just uh, become, being appreciated. Uh, disco was fading. This is before Nirvana. What? Yes, there was a time. Yeah, there was a time. Anyway, the Planetary Society has been involved in these ex unusual ideas for 30 years, 32 years. And one of our latest ideas is to use the helium in the ullage in the space above the fuel to poke a hole in a planet and get some rocks so that they could one day be brought back to the Earth. If you talk to the Martian geologists, I mean, they're Earth geologists studying Mars. Although, actually, when you spend enough time with them, maybe you're not sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's not from here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the Planetary Society has been trying various ideas for a long time. We have tried to put a microphone on Mars a couple times. Well, we did put a microphone on Mars, fortunately. It's on the south pole of Mars. Uh, crashed, which it's not as useful uh, after that happens. But Planet Vax, one of our new ideas, where we suck up Martian regolith doing more with less, doing what would normally be uh, Waste, fuel, uh, waste gas wouldn't have any function, using that to maybe speed up this process where the Mars-obsessed geologists can bring their sample back, get on with their lives. Now, some of you uh, may recognize this picture. It's the 707 prototype. It was called the Dash 80. If you take just a second, there's a problem with this picture. The 707-80 is actually upside down in this photo. This is the actual picture. So there was a uh, test pilot whose name really was Tex Johnston. And he really did affect that down-home accent that Chuck Yeager and all the right stuff astronauts had. And he did a barrel roll with the Dash 80 airplane. Now, I don't know how many airplane rides you've been on, but they very seldom execute this. <laughs> 
And so he lands. And the bosses of Boeing are ex express concern. <laughs> Can I say concern? <laughs> and so Tex Johnston is supposed to have said, one test is worth a thousand expert opinions. And that really is the essence of this, you guys. Just whenever you go out there and have these wonderful ideas, bear in mind that sooner or later you've got to prove it out. 